What's up, YouTube friends? Welcome back to Badger Canyon Motorsports. Thanks for joining me here in the shop today. Behind me, we've got a Murray go kart. This is my buddy Seth. Uh, Seth's the guy that helps me out with all the plasma cutting stuff that we do here on the channel for all the different projects that we've got going on. And this go kart has been sitting in his yard for a while since kids, and it kind of in some rough shape. So I figured, uh, what better thank you than to get this thing going for his kids again. Um, we got a bunch of fabricating that we got to do on it, but I think to start off, let's go ahead and replace some tires. We just got these in today from Go Power Sports. These are their go kart turf tires. We've got some 13 inch ones for the front, and we got some 15 inch ones for the back. Over on my fabrication table we've got our Harbor Freight mini tire changer set up so let's jump right in and start replacing these tires. Alright, so I got the tires mounted on the wheels again. They look really nice. Cleaned them up. Uh, they're dirty as hell. This cart is uh, a setup for a one wheeler peeler, but there's a key in the other one that we're going to put in. And we're going to make the thing two wheel drive. But the sprocket and the brake uh, bolt right here to this hub. And they're kind of rusty and look like crap. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to take them, we're going to go toss them in the sandblast cabinet behind me over here, and we're going to clean these things up. Now this is a Harbor Freight cabinet, although we do have an Eastwood pedal and an Eastwood gun on it. The pedal's really nice so you don't have to sit there and pull the, the trigger on the Harbor Freight jobber. Uh, so let's lock this up. You can see that I've got a receptacle box there with a light switch and a set of receptacles. The bottom one feeds the onboard Harbor Freight light. The top one is separate and runs directly off the switch, which turns on the vacuum, which sucks through a knockout bucket into the cabinet. So while we're at cleaning all this stuff up, we 
painting it, just touching it up with some uh, satin black paint primer combo. Also did go around the band brake. Uh, there's still enough meat on the brake to be able to use it. So we're just going to go ahead and pop it back on. We'll throw the pins in there here in a minute. Um, so we got the key. So I was saying this, when this originally got to me, it was a one-wheeler peeler. The right side rear uh, just spun free. Uh, pulled it off expecting just to find uh, a floater hub, and there's actually a key for the other side. So we're just going to go ahead and pop the keys back in. Uh, both sides, new keys, uh, new stock. Uh, make this a, a two-wheel drive go-kart again. All right, so we got the tires on. We got our brand new Predator engine back here. It had a 196 Greyhound in it. Most of it was okay. The gas tank was trashed. We just decided to go ahead and, and throw a new Predator on it. Uh, this has the governor removed along with the low oil sensor. Uh, this does not have a stage one kit yet. It probably will in the future. But I figured since we got the wheels on, let's go ahead and get the new clutch and chain hooked up. So the clutch is a 10 tooth uh, 41 420 clutch from Go Power Sports with a 3 quarter inch bore to fit on the Predator crankshaft. Uh, I do have this bolted in loosely at the moment, but. That might actually fit. Let's see if we can find out. I'm not expecting this to be able to go on. If it goes on, that would be awesome. Yep, not happening. So we're gonna do a couple bolts, swing the engine that way, and then get that clutch on. Okay, so we got our Allen's for the grub screws, we got our socket and our bolt, and we got a little bit of Loctite. Take the package with the grub screws. Now we're gonna put these grub screws in with just a little bit of Loctite on them. Hmm. Looks like we've got a little bit of a fitment issue, so we're going to go ahead and take the uh, the other two bolts out of the engine, pull it back off, throw it on the bench, and see where we're having an issue. Alright, so I was just up here thinking about this. This is the finger chopper piece that would go right here. Crankcase bolt goes through it. Unfortunately, this gold piece right here, this bronze piece, is a bushing that needs to be oiled regularly. Putting this over at blocks that bushing makes you unable to lubricate that bushing up. So we're going to go ahead and chuck this in the bucket and put it back on without it. Uh, we will put a washer here that's just big enough to stop this from coming off but still give you access to that bushing in there. Got the back tires all done. Now we're getting the front tires done. But before we get working on that we need to go outside and grab some firewood for the stove. Tucker got a dirt bike for Christmas. A little SSR 125. What do you think of it? I like it. It's not as fast as my mini bike, but fun to rip around in the pasture.
I gotta thank our buddy Josh for keeping an eye out and finding this thing for us. This stove is a huge help, uh, making it so much nicer to work out here in the cold. This thing usually keeps it about 55 degrees in here. We've got a pretty big shop, big area to keep warm. 55 inside ain't so bad when it's 25 outside. All right, so we're back at working at the go-kart. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, life and all that stuff happened, and I made some progress off camera. We got the new keel tube put in, runs all the way from the back axle up to the front axle. It also supports the perches for the throttle and brake, and then the perch for the uh, brake crossbar, whatever you want to call that. Also made the new pedal perches. This piece is out of square tubing uh, that the pedals actually mount to, and then that transitions into the round keel tube right here. And of course, a new front uh, pedal stop, footrest, whatever, on the Rogue Fab tubing bender. So we're gonna be focusing on the seat today, getting that mounted. So we've gotta make new rails, the crossbars, and then the piece for the seat to attach to. So we've got our, our seat from Go Power Sports. We've got the holes drilled and matched to the plate. Uh, so let's go ahead and start welding that stuff up. All right, today we're gonna be running the TIG 200 Digital from Eastwood, 100% argon. We've got ER70S2, 1 16th inch filler rod. We're gonna be running a 1 8th inch tungsten. We've got the flex head on this one which I absolutely love the flex head. Uh, you really get around into some tight spots. Let's go ahead and sharpen this tungsten and uh, we're gonna start making the seat bracket first. So we're back out here. It's Sunday. We just got back from a ride, a really good ride, out up on the ridge. Um, last night the camera ran out of battery, so I ended up finishing up the seat mount. Let's check it out real quick. We've got the two crossbars. Everything's all TIG welded up. We had to add this support in, bolted up underneath here, one on each side. We put the supports up to stop the seat from flexing forward. So now we got the seat mounted. We're gonna mock up the steering. We've got our new steering wheel from Go Power Sports. Uh, with the steering hub, we'll get some shorter bolts as soon as I get that measured out and get to the hardware store. Steering shaft. These are the collars that are gonna support the steering column. I've got bronze oil light bushings pressed into the end of each side. So there's a bearing surface. The main problem with this old steering, there's no bearing surface in here, so it's steel on steel. This one you can turn 
but this one is absolutely seized up cock stiff which is why this ended up failing because they were trying to break it loose and snapped it off the center tube. My buddy Seth is on his way out. We're going to get his kid sit in it and get the uh, steering angle where it feels most comfortable to him and set the steering up from there. All right, so my buddy Seth stopped by the other day. We measured uh, everything up for the steering angle. But one of the things that we were kind of finding when getting his feet on the pedals and all that was it was just kind of hard for him to get them on the pedal. So if you notice on the pedals, the control rod is basically dead center of the pedal. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to swap these pedals out. We're going to get some that just come up and out. And then I've also put these uh, cross pieces in. Basically these are just going to be a perch for your foot so that any bumps and stuff you have the ability to keep your foot in position while you're driving. So we're going to get those perches buzzed in. Uh, now it's time to get onto the steering. So we're going to first piece that we're going to make is the lower support and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So you see me weld up the tie rods for the steering on this go-kart. I got everything bolted up and then I did this. So all we needed to get finished up was the pedals. Got that nice steering in there. So as you can see in that video that I took on my phone, um, I messed up. Uh, everything that I've designed uses uh, trailing arm steering and this is leading arm steering. So when I made the Pitman arm, I made it to go drop down underneath. So I made my steering perch, that really nice triangular piece stick up above and well the steering steers backwards so we fixed it i ended up surgically removing it up top repositioning it down below changing the angle of this guy and lowering it about an inch we're still able to use the tie rods that i fabbed and we can even use the pitman arm that we had cut out but I had this cut out of thinner stuff just so that I could prototype it up uh, easier to bend and all that. Um, so I've actually redrew this a little bit, made some changes to it last night on the computer, emailed those over to Seth. So we're going to get the new brake pedals and the new pitman arm cut out 
and we can get this thing finally assembled. Well, so while I've been stuck on pause on the pedals and the pitman arm, I went through and did a couple other things, I finished some stuff up. We did the kill switch for the steering wheel, ran the wiring for that, and trimmed up the throttle cable. I trimmed it down about eight inches so that it's not dangling below the axle so it doesn't get hung up on anything. And we're gonna get some paint on the exposed metal. So we've got the wire for the kill switch for the steering wheel run down into the center tube, uh, grommeted there. Coming out of the tube, grommeted again, run into what would have been for the low oil cutoff switch so that we still retain the functionality of the factory kill switch. So that is the very first pull of the starter. She fired right up. Uh, that's a brand new engine, never been fired before. That's kind of cool that it kicked right off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this warm up for about 10 minutes or so, and then uh, we'll let Tucker test drive it for the first go.
right, so there it is. Uh, fully functional Murray go kart. Let's do a build recap. New Predator, Governor Removal, Low Oil Sensor Delete, uh, new clutch, new chain, uh, new center tube fabrication, new pedal mounts, new front support bar, uh, new steering, new seats, uh, Go Power Sports for everything that I didn't fabricate myself. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, that'd be cool. Any questions on it, I'll answer them in the comments below, because I ain't big enough to be able to ignore comments and stuff. And if you feel I've earned it, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to get 2,000 subscribers sooner rather than later. And we'll do some fun stuff when we get 2,000 subs. As far as upcoming projects, we got to finish the 450 pit bike. And that's going to be the majority of my focus until we get it done and get it out to, uh, to Chris. Anyway, thanks for watching Bad Decaney Motorsports. We'll see you on the next episode.